Uh, we're a startup. We are four people now. We set out to decarbonise housing. We later decided that district heating was the, the right way to do this because any individual house is just too small and too annoying and not worth the effort of bothering with. Um, so heat networks, traditionally, it's all about the pipes, steam and self-acting controls. Maybe if you were lucky, you got an electric pump and some, some power controls. The people who designed those were stupendous badasses because getting that right is difficult. You can't see what's going on. You have no idea what the consumers are doing. That is years of hard graft to to work out how to control this stuff. <coughs> we thought we'd cheat because technology is almost free now. So let's take an energy network from the heat source right up to the radiators, including all the consumer controls, all the retail interfaces. So we have a system. It is one system. You can see what's going on. You can prod what's going on. You can take control of what's going on so that we can learn about this stuff. Residential. We have space heat. We have hot water. Space heating, I have an emitter, I have some ventilation load, I have some internal short-term storage, and I have some, some heavyweight longer-term storage in the building. Uh, notes? Yep. What game should we play with our system? Well, if I'm a developer, a house builder, SAP Bredem is my rule, it's the first law of the meta notes. It doesn't matter when you take it, how fast you take it, it's 3.48p a unit and that's that. Consumer side, my own tariff, again, it, well, it's XP a day and it's XP a unit. I don't care what it is, when it is, how fast it is, what colour it is. First law of thermodynamics. So how this plays out is, is with on and off. Um, now, there are shinier and less shinier ways of doing it, but the, the game is basically I want as much as possible, as late as possible, to just keep me long enough, comfortable long enough while I'm in the house, and then I'll go cold again. Because it... There's no cost to that. If I, if I keep it hotter than it needs to be for longer than it needs to be, that'll cost me more money. So this is what we get. If I take my averagely crummy house, okay, I rolled in bed at midday yesterday, we've got a reheat burn at um, one, and then it cycles every two or three hours and, and tops itself back up. We are using those bricks. We are using that plasterboard in a dumb, basic, simple way, but it, it kind of works. The Swedes, when I showed them this, were horrified. They said it lots, drops one degree in three hours, in two hours, when it's 12 degrees outside. Flip the Nora, they're more 12, 24 hours. What does that look like for an energy network? And this, this is heat, this is electricity, it could be anything. Well, I don't know, we didn't have one, so I stole somebody else's. There's a link at the bottom. Aggressive night setbacks, keep my house cool at night to save me money. Everybody's schedule is pretty similar. I haven't placed any limits in the tariff or in, on, the t on the hardware about how fast you can reheat or what the minimum bound might be. So this blue curve, that's what you'll get with these controls. In the morning, you will nail your energy network. If I took my averagely crummy house and I took those two or three hours of storage, I can, with the red curve, shift that peak forwards, do some preheating and things. But why should I? Why do I care? You've set the rules of the game, and you've set the rules of the game as the first law of thermodynamics. Doesn't matter. This guy doesn't care. Gas, the first law is pretty much true. You don't need to worry about the second law too much. Future energy networks, you do. It matters what heat source you're using, how fast you're using it, how hard you're using it, what your temperature and things are. OK. What do, the, what do other people do? Well, they don't use a clock. Let's just put a, a proportional actuator on every single emitter in every single room. I will set the temperature I want, and that'll be that. The building takes 24 hours to cool up and heat down anyway. Why should I bother heating it up and cooling it down? I get room by room zoning. You can fiddle with it, you, you will, and you will get 10% of customers are turning up and down, up and down, up and down. Most people are lazy, it's great. You just get lovely flat heat load that slowly follows the weather a little bit. Um, but it does increase the quantity of heat I'm using, especially in the UK context. It might not be high quality heat. I might be able to use a, much, a bigger quantity of low quality heat. And I use quality, not exergy, because exergy confuses journalists. They understand high quality and low quality. So just why isn't this reflected in the tariff that, uh, that I'm paying? 
The EU doesn't get it either. The heat pump folks do, the district heating people do. The energy efficiency directive is all on the first law. It doesn't matter what the quality is, just how many units. It's madness. Um, another advantage of this, and I have stolen one of William Orchard's slides. Um, if you do continuous heating, rather than having your radiators on it flat out for half an hour, or maybe flat out for an hour, or three hours, if it's cold, where do I have a pointer here? Is that pointer? So they will run at you know whatever the maximum power and return temperature is for a short amount of time, a short amount of time, a short amount of time. I can leave them running longer at a lower temperature. And for your heat pumps, for your CHP returns, this is a good thing. This blue curve is your your number of hours at this power output. So for a large part of the year, there is there is no heat demand at all. Most of the years, this this is the sprawl that Dave talks about. And every now and again, you have to turn the wick up a bit. But but really, you want to sit here. And if you're using those time clock controls, you're going to serve all of this heat load at this this other temperature. So modulating controls are good. Hot water. Do I store it, or do I create it instantly on demand? And if I store it, <coughs> do I use an on-off valve, or do I use a, a, a continuous heater? If I use that on-off valve, I will use an entire day's worth of hot water, and then probably at exactly the same time, because nobody's ever reprogrammed that thermostat, all those stores go bang, and I destroy my network again. If I continuously reheat my hot water, so as soon as somebody's in the shower, I slowly start heating that tank up again, I'll get a wave of demand. It'll smooth out that peak. And if I do it instantaneously, it happens when it happens, and it doesn't happen when it doesn't happen. The advantage of this, it's really, really hard to get it wrong. You can't ruin it with the controls because there aren't any. Um, uh, this might not be what you expect me to say, Dave, but a lot, of the, a lot of the stuff that we see on the continent is just keep it simple. We'll actually engineer a solution that makes it really hard to get it wrong. It's not the best. You can do better if you use this valve and you use it intelligently, but you know, this sort of stuff is, is, is foolproof, is consumer proof. Um, all right, put control in. I've got an energy network. This thing needs to be controlled in real time. It needs to react to all of the loads on it. I need to know what the system is being asked to provide, create a plan that I can create quickly every time, and then implement it. And that, that plan has to handle constraints. In your own home, that might be if I'm in the shower and somebody flushes the loo, I get scolded, the loo fills up, and it's handled that constraint, but not in a particularly good way. Um, that's not to say that water can't be made smart. If I, uh, if I have two loads on my network, I have a space heat demand and a hot water demand, and the network pressure drops, these will be starved. Which one starves first? The hot water demand, if I have a really slow valve on it, will get starved. The hot water demand, if I have a fast valve, the valve will just open up straight away and it will meet that demand, so long as it's not hidden behind a PPCV. So you can passively, with water, do control in real time. If you have electronics, you can do whatever the heck you like. So for example, yes, I turn the hot water tap on in one house, I'm going to kill the space heat, not in that house, but in the rest of the network. Or I'm at, a, I'm at capacity constraint. Who should I serve first? Well, hot water wins, then it's the cold houses, then it's the houses that aren't so cold. Or maybe it's hot water, grandma, students. Which, whichever you prefer, but you can choose your, your, your real-time control. And then there's predictive stuff. Where am I now? Where do I want to be? What is going to matter? And how much do I care? So I know how much it costs for a boiler. I know how much it costs for a heat pump. I have a, a function for how much I care about being comfortable. Maybe I don't care much about being comfortable, but you do. You can put a waiting function on it, compute an optimal solution, and then implement <coughs> it. That sort of model predict control action, bit of preheat and a heat pump, fire boiler, off it goes. Most of the time that does exactly the same as a well set up optimum start system or weather comp system. You're not adding much to somebody who really knows their stuff. Where you are adding, I think, though, is when you share the output. So I can share the output of a, a, a smart system with a consumer. You have the money, but this which was hot water and that which was space heating. From the same meter, I can disaggregate it. Oh, that's what happened to my money. This is my thermostat. I chose that temperature and these times to be comfortable. Well, that's what I used. That's what I'm going to use based on that. And this is, again, what my neighbor or my equivalent would have used. 
in real time. Click, consequence, click, consequence. And, and that, I think, is where the, the, the demand management starts to kick in. Is it time for a fair use tariff, perhaps? I know what your building does. I know what my costs are for my network. I could say to you, tell you what, for 30 quid a month, I'll give you a fair use allowance, you know? I will give you every day enough heat to heat your house based on the weather, enough hot water based on how many people you've talked in the house. Flat fee, 30 quid. Any out of usage allowance, well, that's extra. It's sort of internet. We do traffic management. Mobile phones, we have a, a fair use policy with the smarts. So you can start to do this for heat. And it removes some of the barriers to making, I guess, rational economic decisions when consumers are involved. So avoid, avoid thinking like a gas man. There are some bulletproof steps you can do that don't fail, but smarts will eventually come. And yes, whilst if you manage things, you'll do better than not managing them, the big one is this the pseudo freedom for the consumer to kind of do what they want without killing the network. There's, there's lots of these people, and if you try and make them do what you don't, they don't want, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.